In this processing example, we're going to process an image of M101 composed of five channels, a luminance filter, the three RGB channels, and an H-alpha filter. We'll use these to create an LRGB plus H-alpha composition. This video is the result of collaboration between Hellas Sky, We Do Art, and Pleiades Astrophoto. The images are available in the sample data section of the Hellas Sky website, hellas-sky.com. First, we're going to prepare the individual channels. The first thing we need to do is create a synthetic luminance. We'll use this to try to improve the signal of the luminance image using data from the RGB filters. In other words, we're going to integrate the four broadband images into a single image to achieve the best possible signal-to-noise ratio for our data set. Let's generate the synthetic luminance with image integration. We add the four broadband filters and we integrate them by simply measuring the noise level in each one. Note that we're not enabling any outlier rejection here because that rejection was already done when the four channels were integrated separately. This is the synthetic luminance. We'll name it SYN-L. And now, let's compare this new image with the original luminance. We can do this using pixel math. We simply input the image identifier here. This tells pixel math to place the pixels from the synthetic luminance on top of the original luminance. The problem we face when we do comparisons like this with pixel math is that the two luminances often have different signal intensities. This can be solved easily with linear fit. Linear fit will adjust the sky background level and signal intensity of this image to those of the original luminance. We use the L image as the reference image and apply the process to the synthetic luminance. Now, we reapply the auto stretch. The console tells us that the images had different sky background signals. To equalize the signal intensity of the objects, it had to multiply by 2.5. Now, if we superimpose this image on the original luminance, both images will have the same signal intensity, both in the objects and in the background. This means that we can now compare them visually. This is the synthetic luminance and the original luminance. The noise level now is much lower. The weaker objects are now much clearer. These ones, for example. The image is much cleaner in the spiral arms, too. These small details are clearer. Using this technique, we get a higher quality luminance, making the most of all the data we've compiled. Now we can close the original luminance and keep the synthetic luminance. So these are the five channels we're going to work with. The next step is to create the RGB image. We'll do this with channel combination, which is in the channel management category. We drag each image to the corresponding channel. And click on Apply Global to generate a new image, which we'll call RGB. It's really important to adjust the STF properly here. If we apply the auto stretch, the sky background turns extremely green. In another image, it could be another random color. The color is determined by various factors such as light pollution, air glow, differences in quantum efficiency across the spectrum, or exposure time in each filter. 
As a result of these factors, we'll always get a random color in the sky background. The first thing we need to do is therefore unlink the RGB channels. And now we apply the auto stretch. The color we get now is more or less neutral because the STF adjusts the contrast in each RGB channel separately. If we link the channels and zoom in, we can see that the shadows and midtones adjustments are different for each channel. This isn't a good color balance because we're stretching each of the primary color channels in a different way. But it does allow us to inspect the data closely, and this is important because in this image we have gradients. If we don't display the image correctly, we can't see the gradients, and we need to be able to see them in order to correct them. So first, we unlink the RGB channels and apply the auto stretch. Now we have three working images, and we're going to move them to the second workspace. These three images are the ones we're going to use to compose our color image. First, we have the RGB image. Second, we have the H-alpha image, which will go in the R channel of the color image. And third, we have the synthetic luminance, which we'll use as the lightness channel of the color image. But before we do all that, we need to correct the gradient and color of these images. First, we'll correct the gradients. And we'll start with the easiest image, which is the luminance image. We open Gradient Correction, create a preview containing the whole image, and apply the process with Structure Protection Disabled and Automatic Convergence Enabled. The gradients in the luminance image are very subtle, but it's worth trying to correct them. Here, in this corner, the image is darker, and it's a little darker in this corner, too. In this case, gradient correction slightly overcorrects. We can see this between the spiral arms of the galaxy, especially in this area here. We can prevent this by enabling structure protection. Now these slight gradients toward the bottom have been corrected very well without touching the galaxy. Let's apply the process to the main view and move on to the RGB image. This image has a diagonal gradient that goes from corner to corner, from the green to the red. We probably need to use structure protection like we did in the luminance image so as not to affect the galaxy. And because we have this slight linear gradient, a simplified model with a degree of 1 will probably work very well. First, we create a preview of the whole image. And now we apply the process. As you can see, we've corrected the gradients without any negative effect on the galaxy. To check the result more closely, we can enable Auto Stretch Boosted. Now, although the image is overstretched, we can see that there are some residual gradients, in this green area here, for example. We will probably need to decrease the scale to model smaller gradients. Let's create another preview to compare. By decreasing the scale, we've corrected that green gradient at the top much more effectively. Let's try again, this time decreasing the smoothness a little. This doesn't affect the result very much, so decreasing the scale is a better way to model this gradient. These possible gradients are in the background noise, and we need to evaluate them using a realistic stretch of the image because this correction is probably already enough. 
Let's set the smoothness to 0.4. Go back to the normal auto stretch and compare the two. With this stretch, the slight green gradient is no longer visible. Let's apply gradient correction with these settings to the main image. Lastly, we have the most difficult channel, the H-alpha channel. Often in H-alpha images with so little signal, the camera readout patterns can be more obvious. In most cases, these patterns are horizontal lines. Before we correct the gradients in this image, we're going to correct this pattern of lines. We can do this with the Linear Pattern Subtraction script, which is in the Pattern Correction section. This script will detect the lines and subtract them from the image. It can work with a list of images applying the script to a whole batch, but in this case, we're going to apply it to the active image. The script corrects columns by default. However, in this image, the pattern is in rows, so we're going to disable this option so that the script corrects row patterns, not columns. We can also tell the script to correct specific rows or columns using a text file. In this case, we want to correct the entire image, so we're going to enable this option. Once the script has run, we close the control images, and here's the result. If the lines are completely vertical or horizontal, they are always corrected perfectly. Now that we've corrected the linear pattern, all that's left to do is correct the gradients. We open Gradient Correction again, and let's start by trying without structure protection but with automatic convergence enabled. This is a good result. However, if we look closely, there are still residual gradients. They are very slight, but they are visible because the signal in this image is very low. To correct these smaller scale gradients, we need to decrease the scale setting. This is the result with a scale of 2.5, and this is what we get with a scale of 5. We can even try with a lower scale value. Here it is with a value of 1.5, here is 2.5 again, and 5. The image correction is better with a scale value of 1.5. We may be slightly overcorrecting the center of the galaxy, so let's try again with structure protection enabled. This is the result with structure protection enabled, and here it is without structure protection. Enabling this option brings back the gradient in the center of the image. This is probably because structure protection is creating a mask that includes the gradient. Let's check this by enabling this option here. Indeed, we can see that as the iterations progress, the gradient is being protected more and more. If we only want to select brighter structures, we can increase the protection threshold. Now, it doesn't protect anything in the first iteration, and in the second and third, it only protects the nucleus of the galaxy. This is a good compromise because the H-alpha image also contains the continuum emission of the stars, so this diffuse lightness we see inside the galaxy is from the galaxy itself. It is not a gradient. Let's use these settings and apply the process to the main view.
Now we have three working images in their purest state. In the next video, we'll look at how to adjust the color and start to combine channels.